of like not even up to 24 hours from when I had the call with him um you know we got like a knock on the door and police oh and gosh. stuff and obviously I, I I remember going to them and kind of saying oh no no I, I think you got the wrong person this is what I love community though because the, a community can break you down but a, like a community also is needed to exactly that's why you can't do it in isolation I want to be happy mm. right. they were like that's when they started to hear that this is dangerous. Like you, you think marriage is unhappy. Yeah. And for me, it just felt like everyone who's married is being fake. Like, right. You know, because I'm not in your house, I don't know what, but I know what was going yeah. on in my house, yeah. and right. it wasn't like to change that perspective. Yeah. To say I've grown up with this, and now I'm gonna change my mind. Like, welcome to the Magnify Conversations. I'm Rachel, and I'm one of the hosts today. Uh, if you're new, welcome. We hope that this content will be really helpful and beneficial to you. If you're a regular, it's great to have you back. And one way you can help us to get this out and to benefit more women is by subscribing to this channel. We would love you to do that. And today it's my privilege to introduce Sinead, who will be my co-host. Hi, I'm Sinead Mink. I'm so excited to be co-hosting with Rachel on The Conversations. And we're looking to have open discussions about faith, life, work, career and relationships and how our faith really works in the midst of all of those things. So I'm so excited to be a part of this today. Yeah, let's get into this conversation. Thanks so much for being with us today, Mary. Looking forward to hearing a bit of your story. And we're going to be talking, uh, I guess, mainly about the impact of losing yeah. a father. Um, I just having an absent father. But yeah, it'd be great to hear first a little bit about you. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Mary. I'm a professional and an entrepreneur. Um, I'm a mother to two amazing babies and I'm married to my college sweetheart. <laughs> Aw, tell us a bit more about that. Um, well, I met him when I was 16 um, in college and um, I, I think 17, he was like, oh, I'm, one day I'm gonna marry you, I'm gonna get you a ring and propose to you. And I was like, oh, whatever, go away. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, 18, he really, I was like, oh, this guy's serious. I think he really wow. likes me. Um, and we started and we had our ups and downs. We even had a moment where we took a break. Mm -hmm. um, like, God's grace, we got back together, got married. And it's going to be eight years this year. Amazing. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, so good. Thank wow. you. I think, oh, should we start with a little icebreaker? Yeah, we've got some icebreakers to warm everyone up. Okay, yeah. so unpopular opinion, beauty edition. Okay, okay. so matte lipstick, in or out? I'm... Ugh, I'm gonna say out. Out. I, what do you? Right. Why, what do you think? I do love a mat. Like I just, I like matte cars. Everything matte. <laughs> like, I, I love it all. Just, yeah. I think if it's a red, yeah. If it's a deep, but I feel like matte nudes. There's just something about gloss. Okay. Just even if it's not, you know, you don't need to like you've been eating KFC, but just like a, <laughs> a nice, yeah. you know, there's just That's something. Um, so yeah. <laughs> okay, this is my favorite one. Hair is more important than oh. makeup. I don't already know your answer to this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm hair is more important yeah. than makeup. Are you as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hair. I don't I don't know. I feel like worst comes worse. You could wear sunglasses. You mm. can glam yeah, well, that's actually true. If your okay. hair looks, mm -mm. yeah, <laughs> I'm. A big fan. Okay, so this is interesting. More time should be spent on skincare than makeup. 100 percent yeah really yeah i'm one of those people that i used to fall asleep in my makeup like after like oh, a gosh. uni rave i'll just go to bed <laughs> and just make it work the next day yeah but but you don't do that now though no and I if you did it was like now. once in a while like <laughs> yeah. but i feel like being um a fan of hair over makeup mm -hmm. it means you have to have good skin or decent yeah. skin look after your skin okay. so that you know obviously i know life we're women but yeah. just at least make an effort it's true I'm working on it, guys. Yes. We're all working yeah. on it, girl, because... Yeah. <laughs> Your makeup was great, though, Sinead. Oh, thank you. Not Stunning. done by me, but hey. <laughs> you still um, look good. <laughs> so there's no such thing as too much highlighter, which I've never understood highlighter in the first so, place. So as too much. I disagree. There is... Really? I think there is It depends where it is for me. Highlighter? Yeah, no, because you, you could look like a disco ball. Mm. I don't know if you know what I mean. Like, I feel like subtle goes a long way okay. less is more yeah 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 what do you think Sinead I just I don't actually know the purpose of highlighter so like, I buy all the products and then <laughs> <laughs> like, I, yeah, I don't know the purpose like, I think it's yeah, just more so. to give like a nice glow just a pop you know kind of when you turn ooh. oh it's to like lift out yeah. lift out is the areas when, that you I want to lift out flash hits you that's what I thought it was for like when they take a flash photo it's not like, necessarily like, for <laughs> it highlights <laughs> like it's like, boom. <laughs> it's a necessary four. However, yeah. it does like, it, when done well, it will complement 
the picture okay. and you'll have like yeah i'm gonna get makeup glasses this year i think is the way forward <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah so we're ready to get into this conversation yeah. yeah do you know what before we do that i've got one more though okay do you, do you have an unpopular opinion on fashion mm. i do i'm just trying to think of oh yes i do if I buy something, I'm going to wear it however many times I want. Ooh, okay. I feel like this phase yeah, of, one obviously, time don't wear it today and then wear it next week. However, it's almost like if you wear something once and that's it. Like, I'm like, yeah. no, I bought it for a reason. Yeah. So I'm going to wear it again. Mm. You know, with, it, with good spacing and maybe not to the same crowd. Yeah. But I see people like, oh, what was that dress you wore like three years ago? And I wore that already. I'm like, oh, so what three then happens? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think for me, that's, yeah, I know that's not in today's society with social media and yeah. yeah that's not really popular but mm. for me it's like sorry if you see me again at least i look cute <laughs> yeah and if, if it's something you like yeah, as well you feel yeah. good in. you have yeah. to wear it more than once like yeah. a few times that's yeah so i think that would be my unpopular i don't think that's i'm, something I'm an do. obsessive person though so when i buy something i want to wear it like as many times <laughs> as Obviously, possible yeah, so i had like common. a leopard print jumper that i used to wear like over and over again <laughs> and it just got faded like over time so <laughs> have I'm you so stopped wearing it when it was it. faded no of course oh, not because it was just like see me see leopard so, like <laughs> i just wore that till it yeah i couldn't wear okay, it remember, i don't do that yeah. Yeah. but i do do like a i will bring something and it'll be like oh my gosh you wore that like if it's like a ago. statement yeah. outfit yeah. as well yeah, yeah, exactly. or a dress or yeah mm. i just think yeah I what about you wear it you like i'm so i'm not like i i don't uh, yeah it's definitely an unpopular opinion mm. i I'm probably, I've probably been a bit like, I've worn it three times, I can't wear it again. No. But I, no, I probably have. But then I think if it's a dress or like yeah. a certain outfit, it's just like an occasional type mm. thing. If I really like it, I will wear it again. Yeah. Maybe to a different crowd, like yeah, you said. Yeah, no, and I think three times is, depending on, we're thinking of your wardrobe, I think three times is And I wouldn't just use. get rid of it either. Yeah, I'd keep no. it in the wardrobe because yeah. like, I've done that and then a year later I've been like, yeah, I, I want to wear this again. It's a cycle, so I'm praying certain things come back in so that I can <laughs> and we still fit in it. Again. Yeah. yeah, and I still yeah. Girl, that is the girl. challenge if you can still fit. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, I feel like yeah, yeah it's just yeah. I'm more talking about people who wear it once and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah, gone. No. Yeah. yeah, no, no that's, that's not for me. It's not right. Mm-hmm. It's just my wallet can't handle it anymore. No, so, yeah. and this, I bought yeah. it because I thought it was cute. Yeah, like, I wouldn't be able to tell you to wear it to a different crowds. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we're going to be talking about the impact of losing a father, and obviously that's something you've been through, um, Mary. I'm just having an absent father, really, mm-hmm. just on the impact of that. Mm-hmm. So why is it important to you that we're chatting about this today? Um, I think, when I look back, mm-hmm. I think um, I wish, at the time, I could have watched something or seen someone mm-hmm. talking about it. Right. Um, I think at the time for me it was like I felt like the outcast the anomaly mm. like this how old, how old were you? I was 18 right okay. um, so it just felt very oh okay no one mm. around me and not obviously there was some people but the people who I could like talk with connect with and mm. stuff or maybe it was like one or two of us but majority and just at that time in the circle community I was in everyone had dad yeah. so um i just you know there's times where i just think i wish i could have put on a video and seen yeah. a woman talking mm. about it and you know maybe that at that point would have given me the hope that i didn't have mm. um so yeah i think it's really important yeah with that. and what's like what's your story around that so when you lost your dad at 18 mm. what was kind of the circumstance and so he passed away quite tragically um and it was unexpected um and i remember like even the day before wow. he passed away talking to him and we were like oh yeah we're gonna meet up on the weekend and um my mom and dad were divorced yeah. um we're gonna meet up on the weekend and i was like oh can you take me to that chinese restaurant mm. and he was like okay 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 you know but be ready when i get there and <laughs> have your siblings ready as well mm, wow. i've got two younger siblings and i was like okay 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 and then I think earlier hours of like, not even up to 24 hours from when I had the call with him, um, you know, we got like a knock on the door and police oh and God. stuff. And obviously I, I, I remember going to them and kind of saying, oh no, no, I, I think you got the wrong person. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm going mm. to a Chinese restaurant with my dad. And now hearing it, I'm like silly. Like, yeah. but I was so confident mm. that we've got plans. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. going upstairs. Um, oh. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, Ooh. I remember going upstairs and calling his phone, and it was just ringing, ringing. I was like, pick up, pick up, pick up. Mm. Like I need to tell these people that it's not you. 
I don't remember. She's like, he's not picked up yet. But I'm gonna call him, and they were looking at me like, okay. Right. Wow. And you know, now looking back, they're probably thinking, we're gonna give you a moment. Yeah. Um. And I think he didn't pick her up, and I remember. I think I tried. I think I tried seventy four times. Wow. And I think. At that point, I remember thinking, yeah. I think it's real. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. No, 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 no. no. And I think the shock of that yeah. as well. And it was just something that I'd never thought about. Mm. Um, so I wasn't, you know, like if they said, I don't know, um, I don't know. I just felt like, unfortunately, I was due to like my mum and dad's rocky marriage there was elements of disappointment that mm. i was used to like we'll have plans as a family and there might be a big argument so we can't go mm. and so it's almost like if we made plans there's a part of yeah. me thinking fingers crossed hope it happens right. um you know if my dad said he was going to come on a certain day and he wouldn't i'd be like oh dad you know yeah. that just wasn't in my disappointment dictionary yeah mm. yeah mm-hmm. so it that was like death yeah mm-hmm. No. what's yeah. that like mm. oh no that's not now that's like when they're like 70 80 yeah. 90 mm. no it's not my dad like yeah. you know that's almost not my plan yeah. and um yeah and i think for me it was then that i realized wow this is this is reality for me mm. now. yeah thank you for sharing that though it's not yeah. easy to Mm. you remember the last conversation you had with him mm. which is just so like you actually remember the last thing you were going to do together it was so um, yeah. I'm sharing this because there might be someone out there who still has their dad mm. um, but because of unfortunately gossip things in Nigerian community my, I guess my mum and dad having divorced in, that, in those times mm. was like almost like a taboo yeah um now you see more women kind of you know being i'm not happy i'm not but then it was like she was almost like stoned mm. for being this woman mm. who you know it was, it was really bad and i think one thing we experienced as children which still i've forgiven them eventually um and more recently but we were hearing a lot of negativity wow. um really spiteful horrible comments from people who we thought you know, as a Nigerian, everybody's your auntie, everybody's your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's even some people who would have to call mummy and daddy and yeah. grandma and grandma, but they weren't yeah, really, yeah. but that was just the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it just somehow always got back to us, you know, hearing mm. stuff like, oh, these kids watch, she ain't going to be able to cope. Um, wow. they're about not, your mum that... Uh, and yeah, my mum not guys. coping and, you know, myself, my brother and my sister, you mm. know, oh, the kids are going to go wayward and wow. they're not going to prosper. And, you know, just... That's so, like, that's tough to hear. You know, and... Yeah. <sighs> I don't know yeah. if you know Nigerians, but when they talk, oh, yeah. it's like, oh gosh, <laughs> their words are piercing. And it was yeah. like hearing that was just like, just, wait, she said that. Mm. And I was like, these are people who we would do Christmas with. These yeah. people wow. who we would mm. have around us. These are people yeah. who would go to church with. Like, mm. yeah. And for me, that really was where m- mm. my faith really started to shake already. Mm. Because I just thought, wait, this is what Christians do. Is, yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't think I'm interested in this mm. part. Yeah. Um, and then when... I think around that stuff was happening and then I remember him being upset with me and you know because I think someone said and I was like that's not true and you know I really Mm. was like dad how can you listen to other people yeah and not me and it was that day that we actually spoke and you know he said sorry and I was like you know Mm. I need you to like trust me I'm your daughter like you know kind of thing and I've got your best interest I know I know and that's when he said we're going to go to the Chinese restaurant Mm. and I just feel like I don't know how much worse I would feel yeah, if you hadn't if had we that. didn't have that conversation yeah. because yeah. Do, do you know what I mean yes yeah, so like that is um, mm. it's amazing that you were able to even have that, have that. conversation yeah. you know now looking yeah. back I'm almost like yeah. oh it was like was it that the closure conversation to our mm. relationship like that I love you I forgive you I've got mm. you yeah. um so yeah um so I think for me it yeah at that time, it just felt very, 
Oh gosh, mm. yeah. So you talk about like community a lot and your faith, mm-hmm. and I I always ask people who introduced you to God because mm-hmm. sometimes the person that introduces you to God is how you see God, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and do you know what I like? Yeah, 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 so yeah. I saw God initially as like an African bearded man mm. because <laughs> that's do you know what, that's how my dad looked, <laughs> and then I realized oh like he's a whole other person. Yeah. So did you see like what lens did you see God? I'm just asking because mm. maybe that is what shaped the disconnect. Mm. I think it I did, mean? you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think I saw God, so my mum and dad, but mainly my mum, yes. brought me to God. Okay. Right. And I saw God through my mum. Yeah. Mm. I saw, you know, um, and there's aspects of God I saw that I thought, I don't want this. Mm. I don't want to be on my knees sobbing, saying, God, please change my husband. Yes. Every right. so often. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, I like the element of, you know, prayer. I like how she's very driven. Mm. I like how she's very, we're going to, you know that, you don't have a choice. We're yeah. going to church. Yeah. <laughs> I like the coming to wake us up at 5 a.m. praying. And yeah. it's just like, you're like, oh, yeah. mom, get yeah. up. We have to the pray. The commitment that she Yeah, had. I loved yeah. it. And I can, yeah. you know, see, and, you know, that took me there. And I think in terms of seeing Jesus, I think I started to see Jesus through my community. And at that point, it was like wow. fake. Fake. Right. So I started, it made yeah. me start to question, like, mm. is this what Christianity is? This is? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. You know, when everything is well, we're all yeah. jolly jolly. Mm. And when things go sour, we all back back gossiping. Yeah. And especially mm. when it's happening in the church, it's scary because yeah. it's yeah. like, <gasps> if we can't do it, yeah, here, we're like, there's like, there's a lack of safety in yeah. that. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, that's exactly that is your like. point of reference when you're growing. If that's your point yeah. of reference when yeah. you're growing up, it's also like, well, okay, where so, yeah, do that, I go? That, yeah, that, that, that was it. Yeah. That was my yeah. point of reference. And then thankfully, I what I did have that I really feel kept me mm. was a youth um okay. right. church and a yeah. youth pastor yeah. mm. and it was just a real mm. group of people thank god for youth church um honestly, yeah. honestly yeah. um so even though it was like part of the church which i was like mm. yes but the youth part and we would do things like go cinema do just random yeah. chill in someone's house till god knows what time help yeah. clear up and mm. everyone go home yeah. and i think that kind of kept me subconsciously if that yeah. makes sense yeah. um until i then i think in uni yes. when i stepped away from my usual community mm. um i started going to church okay. in a different right. setting yeah and i really saw oh this is who Jesus and that is. was different okay. and that was different yeah. right this was a i mean i grew up with you know pastors and you Sunday's best okay you couldn't right. go to church Big in tracksuits mm. and Big, yeah. that mm. hat yeah. and jeans yeah. was like, eh, is that what you're going to wear for God? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and Someone like, you have to perform. You have to, yeah. Okay, you know, you have yeah. to bring your best, even yeah. if you don't feel, yeah. you know, and that's why I think it was all that's the masking. Feed, that was all feeding into yeah. that narrative for you, though, wasn't exactly. it? That, like, things are actually not great, but and I'm feeling like I've got to make everything exactly. clear. Yeah. Yeah. To that point, and then yeah. I go to another church mm-hmm. in, um, I went to University of Essex. Okay. It's actually called K-Said, Um, And the pastor's in the Arsenal top in jeans i'm like <laughs> what do they do this <laughs> yeah. and i'm like oh and like his yeah. wife is right next to him with his yeah. children and like his children are coming to hug him whereas mm. an african child you dare not pass this out because like, oh, she's gonna push yeah. you back i do understand all that but it was just like what's going on yeah. here mm. and then it, it just felt like the church just i think god knew what he was doing when he planted okay. me there yeah mm. because you know the pastor was like guys you if you're free on saturday we're gonna go help the neighbor down the road with her garden, she's elderly, so let us. And I was like, Yeah, you're the pastor gonna go help, her. yeah. Mm, and yeah. it sh- showed me that love and God was in your actions, yeah. right? As yeah. opposed to just your talk. Yeah. And I think that for me, and that was at about the age of 20, yeah. set me in a way of Mary, you've seen this all wrong, wow. And that almost just mm. gave me a 180, and it was yeah. like, Okay, let's go. And beyond yeah. there, Mary, so like, I know. For you, this has had a massive impact just on mm. your, even just your romantic relationship. Mm. You know, you say just even how you view mm. marriage. Was that just marriage or was it just long-term relationships in general that you were thinking, really, I don't want to... Do you know what, now you say it, mm. I don't think my mind even... You hadn't even thought of about long it. Term. It was just, because right. all I knew was you, you're with someone and you get married and you yeah. have children mm. yeah. and you mm. live happily, well, not necessarily happily, <laughs> but you live <laughs> ever after. Yeah. Um, so at that point, it was just marriage yeah. like yeah. you know for me it was just like oh i'm not getting married i remember like my mom's mm. older aunties saying ah oh, god for don't say that so i'm like like yeah. i'm not like and yeah. i would say it so confidently because it's like yeah. no no it's fine like everyone doesn't need to get married like yeah. i want to be happy mm. right. they were like that's when they kind started to hear that this is dangerous like you you think marriage is unhappy yeah and for me it just felt like everyone who's married is being fake mm. like, right you know because i'm not in your house i don't know what but i know what was going yeah. on in my house yeah. and right. it wasn't like 
you know, between the lovers are happy, mm. you know, or always. It was more downs than ups. Yeah. Um, and then I think obviously by God's grace, as I kind of came back to Christ, saw Christ in a new, in the right light. Yeah. As I like to say, and that kind of started to slowly like just change mm. everything around me. Did you did you do anything like? extra because to change that mm. perspective it's huge yeah to say yeah. i've grown up with this and now i'm mm. gonna change my yeah. mind like mm. people don't just mm. do you know what i mean what, you know was what it you, intentional yeah. or was it like i'll be honest and it's so sad but i was fueled and gingered not necessarily with god <laughs> gingered. <laughs> gingered all the way girl <laughs> not necessarily just with god but just yeah. with my life that mm the comments I'd heard wow. would not be my life. Okay. Right. So it almost yeah. felt like even if I wanted to mm. do what everybody else was doing, it was like, Mary, no. Yeah. Mm. And I think that mindset. Yeah. So when I was in uni, like I didn't, apart from the fact I'm very claustrophobic. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, there's going to be how many people? Okay. Like I'm not interested <laughs> or someone smells. I'm going to move. <laughs> everyone knows me regardless. Yeah. Um, I rather, I'm a homie, but everyone come around mine and chill and let's yeah. eat and talk as opposed to, I can't hear you, babe. Yeah. yeah. That's not really my scene. <laughs> um, but yeah, so apart from that, like I was really just like, okay, I'm, I, f- I felt going with that mentality mm-hmm. then pushed me to be in places where I saw Jesus for real and wow. through yeah. people's actions. Yeah. yeah. So I felt this love yeah. through actions. People were, who didn't know my story were checking up on me. Right. Right. People were like, oh man, we haven't seen you, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. I got some food, do you want? I was like, yeah. what? Was like, it was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and that, amazing. Ju- and yeah. that yeah. for me was like, yeah. so when I, obviously I stayed there for three yeah. to four years. Yeah seeing that was like yeah. oh and yeah, yeah. And this is what yeah. i love community i know? love absolutely because the, a community can break you down but as like a community yeah. also builds you, is build you back together yeah, exactly as well. that's what like you can't do it in isolation you can't mm. it's, it's and i think really, that's that's yeah. the like that's what yeah the devil had in my mind yes mm. yeah i like just stay away from everybody focus yeah and you'd be you know i didn't really put people in it yeah um i put some like for you you know, all chill yeah. hang yeah. out but in terms mm. of real life yeah. um and i feel like when I went to uni, I really found a community. Yeah, a community. Yeah. Um, yeah. And not just even like, oh, my friend, my friend, but seeing people who I did wasn't even close to and the way mm. they loved on myself and others mm. and the other students um, at uni. And for me, obviously it was a gradual process yeah. um, and it wasn't done in one day, one year, but it started to shift and it was like, what type of life do you want to mm. live? Mm. And like my youth pastor would preach preachings like, you know, I know it sounds scary, but when you all is said and done and you're buried six foot under, yeah. how do you want to be remembered? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from like yeah. the age of 20, 21, I've got things like that in my mind and I'm seeing this community and I'm like, okay, Mary, you're in control of your life. You need to do yeah. this. And I think that's what helps me yeah. at that point. And that's if I'm powerful. being now, you know, yeah. it obviously I feel like it was all orchestrated for God and yeah. from God, but at the time it just felt like boom, boom, boom. Mm. Yeah. And now looking back, it's like, oh, it all makes sense. But yeah. at the time it just felt like, yeah. you know, just another thing. It's the most destructive sort of time in your mm. life. And the words, these destructive words actually propelled yeah. you. Not mm-hmm. that we received destruction. No, but, but yeah, I, I know exactly you what know, you mean. It's yeah. like, that is the yeah. push. Mm. Yeah. You know, when, what would you say to someone who is like, going through yeah. mm-hmm. because sometimes I, I think it's the christianese talk mm-hmm. it's like oh it is well mm-hmm. you know god mm-hmm. will use this for your and yeah. it's like well this is rough <laughs> yeah like this is some rough mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. what is the language we should use that is better when people are you know being hit with what was it that you responded to i think it was i have to say obviously it grief mm. it, obviously i was dealing with different elements of in life, just stuff from yeah. the divorce and mm. just life and community. And, but in terms of grief, obviously, I feel like everyone handles grief differently. Yes. Mm. And it's I feel complex. like, especially yeah. if it's someone close to you, mm-hmm. I feel like there is an element of give them space, mm. but let them know you're there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So at the time when I was in deep grief, I had my best friend and my husband, mm-hmm. well, then my boyfriend. Yeah. And I remember they would call me and I'd be crying. So I pick up the phone because they've called me like so many times. They could hear. I drop the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. They were just loving on mm. you, and chasing you down, and, and yeah. 
I remember there was one night, my best friend, um, and she was, I'm like seven months older than her. Okay. So I'm September, she's April. And she's still my best friend now. Mm. Um, and she was like, okay, cry. Just yeah. put mm. the phone down, but I'm going to stay on the phone. Wow. And I remember like, probably like, I don't know, 22 minutes, she was still there. Wow. Um, and obviously she had been my life longer than my boyfriend, my husband, boyfriend. Mm. And some of those times when he would call me and I was crying, he would be like, okay, and he'd quickly call her. Oh. <laughs> yeah. should, I do? Should, should, should I go there? Should I do this? Yeah. Um, and they both really just, you know, so I felt like I was the kind of person where, and then I can call them and talk. Mm. Yeah. And rant. Yeah. But they, I just knew they were there. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say for someone going, you need a community. Yeah. And the community doesn't have to be loads of people. The community could start with one person. Yes. Um, yeah. One person that you trust, one person that you love. Mm. Um, and it will build. Yeah. Mm. But just having, just knowing that almost like I was never going to be alone. Yeah. Mm. Allowed me to just grieve when I, like, grieve how I wanted to. Yeah. Mm. So today I want to talk, tomorrow I don't want to. Yeah. Mm. But I know if I do in two days time, they would be They'll there. They'll be there already. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I feel like sometimes when people are supporting people grieving, it's like, well, I called her, she didn't pick up, so, um, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. must be okay. Or... And I know yeah. it can mm. be frustrating because, you know, everyone's got one thing or another going on, mm. but I feel like for someone going through it, I would definitely say don't mm. stay in isolation. Yeah. It's honestly a lie of the enemy. I feel like when you're in isolation, you have wild thoughts. Yeah. Mm. Your mind goes to things yeah. that you didn't even think Mm. you were you know thinking hmm I don't know if I want to do this yeah. anymore mm. you yeah. know and things like yeah. before you know and I feel like having that community and yeah. you know I had I, mean, I will make rules like we're not allowed to talk about anything death related on my dad right mm. so come on and then before you know we're laughing I'm on the floor yeah. because, yeah. do you know what I mean and it was yeah. like I've kind of forgotten in that moment yeah. mm. and things like that helped yeah. so I would definitely say have find community have community yeah. um don't in isolation because it, it honestly doesn't help yeah like mm. even in your community you can still have space for yourself yeah. you don't have to like hold hands yeah. like you know yeah. you know that <laughs> like you know no um but i just feel like there's a lie of yeah. i'm just gonna stay here by myself mm. yeah. and do nothing and i i personally i i wouldn't advise or suggest yeah. that yeah. You know, um, obviously, you've been with your husband since you were 16. Mm. No, 18. So 18. I've known him since I was 16. You've yeah. known him since you were yeah. 16. So you were with him at, like, a really crucial time yeah. as well. And obviously, you've had all that like baggage as well mm -hmm. from your parents' marriage. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. this view of marriage is literally impacting mm -hmm. you now into... How old were you when you got married? I was 26. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you had, like, all... Like, it's quite a significant period of time mm -hmm. in your life. How, like, did your viewpoint become... Were you did you alter your viewpoint in that time of, of marriage or was it, were you nervous? Like thinking Very, that we might end up getting married? Mm, like, did yeah. you have to really fight your demons on that? If that makes sense. I most definitely did have to. And I thought till now I'm still fighting. Wow. Mm. So now it's something that I still, um, sometimes my husband has to do check me and say, listen, I know what's happened with your parents. Yeah. yeah. That's not gonna be our story. And what, yeah. what like, what yeah. sort, can you tell us like a bit of like where you would be faced with something and maybe be a bit triggered? Is that what you mean? Like, yeah, um, oh, let me try and think of something. Um, okay, so there was a time we, when we were first, we got married in our first year. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's go church. And then he was just like, oh, you know, I'm tired and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, and he generally just meant it like, oh, you know, mm. I'm tired, like. yeah. And I just went into, yeah. oh my gosh, my dad used to say, my mum used yeah. to pray for my dad. Yeah. And she used to go just beg him. And, oh my gosh, yeah. she's starting. Oh yeah. my gosh, what have I done? Yeah. What have I done? Yeah. And he was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I think in that point, he just was like, I'm tired. Like, yeah. we can go, but I'm just yeah. saying I'm tired. Like, yeah. whereas now, if he says it, I'm like, yeah, I'm tired, man. Should we go? Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. I know it's not. Whereas then, in my mind, I was like, <gasps> You are scared of, like, that mm -hmm. replaying, yeah. mm -hmm. like, your parents' marriage exactly. almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that was one of my, oh, like, yeah, I remember. So that's something that comes to mind right now. But mm -hmm. things like that used to make me think, oh, gosh. Okay, so I felt mm -hmm. like, even though I, at the point I accepted that, you know, I'm worthy of God's love. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm worthy to be loved. Um, I still had in the back of my head, however... 
sure yeah. x and y happened yeah. Blah, yes. blah, 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 blah. yeah so i felt like, like your backup plan yeah type yeah. yeah literally mm. so i felt like every point in my life i almost had a little backup plan mm. do you think it's wrong i don't know uh, do you mm, not only question. just think because i hear stuff like oh you better have a stash for yourself mm. in case like your husband mm. leaves you mm. <laughs> like oh, i have nothing stashed yet yeah. but <laughs> do you know, I mean, like, is it wrong to have a backup mm. um is it a way of protecting yourself mm. is it is it wrong i don't know i i I don't obviously to each their own. Yeah. But for me and how my mind works, I it won't it wouldn't work yeah. for me mm. because I almost feel like my mind is subconsciously telling me mm. something. Yeah. Could You're happen. Kind of half mm. in. You're almost leaning back yeah. into yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just gonna replay my parents' yeah. narrative. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we break out, if we say okay, you have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying much of my money yeah. only, but um, if you've got nothing, mm. you're probably a bit less likely to say I'm out of here. Because yeah. you don't have money. So yeah. you're going to stay and make it work. Yeah. And this is given, not, I'm not talking about like domestic abuse or like, no, mm-hmm. I'm talking about just, you know, day to day, what, you know, married talk, um, issues. Whereas if I had 100k saved, oh, I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm not thinking twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, I can go put a deposit down in this area. I can mm-hmm. do, like, the way my mindset would work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. However, I'm not saying that a woman shouldn't save. However, but be transparent. Because mm. I feel like everything done in isolation, you have mm. to be careful. The yeah, devil will play in your mind. Yeah. So, yes, my husband saves, we save, and I save. Yeah. And no, we, I might not ask, how much you got to in your savings? And, yeah. You know, but yeah. we know what we're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we know, like, okay, and by the grace of God, you know, he can see the things I'm into. I can see the things he, he's into. Yeah. So I, I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, he's saving to leave me. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Do you know what I mean? It's the it's yeah. like the it's the motivation of it, isn't yeah. it? You're not saving yeah. for the motivation of like I'm just this is a mode of self preservation. Literally that just in case everything goes wrong. Because yeah. I suppose if you did start to think like that, you'd be a little bit worried that you're just leaning back to And the thing is yeah. I don't think you would even notice it. No, you might not notice it. I feel it. like until yeah. it's like, oh boom, and then maybe when you reflect mm. on it, I just feel like you'd just be a bit that bit yeah. more comfortable to mm. um not maybe put as much of an mm. effort, you know. I I don't I don't yeah, I, for me anyway, it, I don't think that would it work. It goes back to what you said about the community and the two faces, and I. It mm. sounds like transparency is a really important yeah, thing mm, you desire for you. For yeah. going forward. Mm, yeah. So it sounds like you grew up in a community that was quite masked, and people weren't showing their full mm-hmm. selves. And then you talk about transparency in your marriage going forward, and mm-hmm. it sounds like it's something you really desired. Mm-hmm for your marriage. Mm-hmm. I mean, how important is that even in your relationship with God, that that transparency? And how did you get to that, mm-hmm. given all of the events and the things that you've seen? Mm, I think yeah. it's definitely still a work in progress. Yeah. Mm. Um, and some days are easier than you know, others. However, I feel like, I feel like if someone was to record mm. my prayer time sometimes or my conversations in a yeah. car with God, they'll be like... <laughs> 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 yeah. like sometimes... Yeah. I can't even pray. And mm. it's like, God, no, I, what, mm. what, what's going on? We didn't discuss this. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm trying. Like, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like, I can hear like a, you need to go back. You need, or like a right. difficult friend. And I'm like, I've tried. And he's like, I need you to go. And I'm like, oh, um, okay. Yeah. All right. But if I'm not, I'm doing that again. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, if someone's watching you, like, you yeah. know. So I feel like, by the grace of God, I genuinely have, a, a realness and a relationship yeah. with him yeah. where I can be cooking and I'm yeah. having a conversation. I can be walking the street and I'm having just yeah. my mind is like, oh my God, so what are you saying about this? But mm. yeah. like, and that's, mm. I think, what has really driven me yeah. because yeah. I can be anywhere. I don't feel yeah. like I need to go on my knees first so or yeah. to be in a, yeah. you know, Heavenly Father yeah. thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. I literally could be anywhere and just be like, yeah. mm, God, I'm not feeling comfortable. I don't mm. like this. Yeah. Okay, you know. Um, and I think that has helped me and then it also has because obviously I it was like how do you move forward how do you trust yeah. people mm-hmm. how do you yeah. and that's not to say yeah. everybody's fake or everyone yeah. like, <laughs> is fake no um, but you know yeah. when you've heard stuff from people who yeah. you know you thought oh these were my people mm. yeah. it, it almost calls into you, question everything yeah, yeah. and it's like, just like all of you mm, you know yeah. you generally yeah. have a big heart you're like mm, yeah. like you know <laughs> And it's like, and I feel like you kind of have to have this strong woman mm. complex. Your, your guard is always up. Yeah. You mm. always have to like be ready. Like, yeah. And I was like, I don't want this life. You I don't want to be do that. It. I don't. I always say to my daughter, don't remember me as a strong woman. Mm. Don't. I don't. I want you to remember me as the happy woman, mm. the woman right. who was present. Mm. 
Yeah. Woman who was dead, the woman yes. who saw situations mm. and found solutions. Yeah. yeah, remember me as that woman. Yeah. The woman who mm. in times of trouble was like, okay, how are we gonna handle this? Mm. Yeah. But not the one who's like, okay, I've got yeah. this, yeah. I've got this. Yes. Because those yeah. people yeah. usually privately break down. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. we think, oh, she's so strong, she's yeah. so strong. Yeah. Mm. But when no one's there, mm-hmm. it's like who's lifting them? Yeah. 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 And for me, so that's why I'm people, oh maybe you're such a strong I don't get what you're saying, but yeah. you know, yeah. um, don't attach that yeah, label. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. I can be weak too. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Help me out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like whereas yeah. I was like almost like you're not allowed to be weak. You're yeah. always strong. In, um, yeah, God has made us strong. You're always strong. Right, like, yeah. it's, like, okay. it's that rhetoric again, yeah. though, isn't it? Of like, <laughs> things yeah. aren't great, but you know, we're okay. Yeah. Be bold, be strong. Yeah. Yeah. For the Lord our God is with you. Yeah. Like, it was just like, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's times yeah. it's like, God, I don't feel strong right now. Yeah. This is what happens. Um, yeah. And I feel like for me, again, having that relationship with God, which has been built mm-hmm. over the years, my whole life, um, really has helped me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like as I'm getting older, I guess oh god i'm getting stronger i'm building more and there's times where i feel like i've oh gosh i've fallen back and then i pick myself up and get back up again yeah. um and i feel like that's how the transparency of god has really helped me yeah. and not just with god with another my friends know me mm. like if mary's not happy you're gonna know even if i'm trying they're gonna be like you're right yeah. i'm like yeah i'm fine like yeah. and they're like yeah you're not all right i'm like yeah. okay I, but I didn't say anything. I almost don't mm. know how to, because I feel like, and it's not always good, because sometimes it's like, Mary, like, yeah. this is not, even my mother-in-law. Yeah. I think that's why we get on so well, like, she loves me, because she was really good, you remind me of me, like, I'll come into the room, <laughs> and she's like, oh, what do you think? I'm like, it's nice. She's like, Mary, yeah. about, um. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. And she's like, yeah. no, you don't like it. Yeah. Uh, it's not really for me, but, yeah. you know, trying to not be yeah. rude, and she was just like, no, we're not having it, if Mary doesn't like <laughs> it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to, I, yeah. I don't know how to lie, or she'll buy me, like, I'm a blesser, she bought me, slippers and i was like thank you so wow, much okay, mom yeah. but um this is not really my, it's not my thing yeah. um and she was just laughing like yeah. this girl. like and i was At just least, like yeah. you know and i was i was concerned about that mm. but she was like keep being you like be mm. brutal and it's like obviously you try and find nice ways to deliver it but yeah. and i think because my relationship with god has helped me try and be open mm. and transparent in that's other beautiful. relationships mm, um yeah. which is by God's grace, it's been a blessing mm, yeah, that's in my life. Important, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mary, you've obviously grown up with your da- uh, grown up without your dad in adulthood, mm-hmm. yeah. And obviously that that has had a massive impact yeah. on you for many reasons. And but I think, especially in culture, obviously there's the phrase of like daddy issues, mm-hmm. which yeah. Well, I'd love to know what you think about it. Quite yeah. often, obviously that's like used in the context of mm-hmm. there's been an absent father. Yeah. It's not that the father's passed away. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? What do you think about the phrase? But then, what do you think about that? even the thought that growing up without a father basically gives you some kind of an issue mm. Mm. i think i don't like the phrase mm. stop yeah. i don't tend to like phrases that label mm. people unless it's like a medical or something why are we labeling ourselves in some and it's like a complex yeah. almost it's not like a the happy girls i don't know if you know what i mean yeah. um yeah. i do get especially obviously i haven't Yes, he was absent, but not in a sense of, no. you know, it, not somewhere. by choice. Not by choice, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I appreciate for someone else it's different. However, I can't disregard some of the, I guess, emotions related to that, like yeah. trust mm. issues and mm. is real. So, obviously, as part of the Magnified community, mm. um, we've started to get some of the community to send in like their audience dilemmas because mm-hmm. there's so many people that have been without a dad you know whether that's through loss or mm-hmm. because they've just been absent in their life so i think it'd be really helpful are you okay if i share yeah, one yeah, with sure. you you can just kind of give your thoughts and okay. wisdom on it um so the first one is this um my dad has never been a consistent figure in my life as he left my mum before i was born mm-hmm. throughout my teenage years i did try to reach out to him but he never responded my mum always said it was for the best because he could be quite nasty and manipulative so eventually i stopped trying because I've never known anything different than not having your dad around. It's never been something which I thought bothered me at all. And it's been the same situation for a lot of my friends too. But the last guy I dated asked me how I made sure that future guys or spouses didn't pay for the mistakes of my father. Mm -hmm. Usually I'd get defensive about a question like that, but secretly it really made me stop and think. Mm -hmm. It made me realize that my default is not to trust guys and usually think the worst of them amongst other things. I realize it's not fair to assume all guys are the same because of my own dad. So mm-hmm. I'd love to hear any advice on how to ensure you don't make a future partner pay for the mistakes of an absent father. 
Oh. Obviously, obviously, your situation is yeah, different, yeah. but mm-hmm. you kind of get the emphasis. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it'd be great to hear um, what you think. Wow, well, I I think obviously yeah, as we said, my situation is different, but I think what I would definitely advise and has helped me is almost finding like a mentor or a woman, maybe who's gone through something similar. Mm. Um, because I just feel like until someone else shares their story, yeah. you kind of feel like the outcast mm. anomaly. And then someone might be like, these are the steps I took. Um, because the truth is we've all got baggage. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, for some it's like simple things. I didn't pay my phone bill. Like, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> you know, for some it's a bit deeper. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely say, you know, find an if it's that, if that is through an in quote, professional therapist, yeah. if that's through someone in your community who you trust that's through someone who you've you know got a good relationship mm-hmm. with um and then also like working on okay almost listing out for me what i used to at a point is i still do it now list out some of the things that if i was looking into my life i wouldn't like mm-hmm. so sometimes i feel like i don't like sometimes how i could my mind can be so negative okay I, you know, it's a time if my husband didn't come home and he's not because I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope he's not dead. I hope he has an accent. And I was just like, yeah. gosh, why are you always quick to jump yeah. to that? And it was almost like, I could see what it was linked to. Mm. And it was something I had to continuously work on. Yeah. Um, through being open and transparent about it. Yeah. Um, affirming myself with positive affirmations as well as scriptural. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously just time. Yeah. So I feel like it's something that you're not the only one. Yeah. There are people yeah. who've gone through it, mm. yeah. are going through it, and will go through it. Yeah. And I think it's that aligning yourself with someone and kind of saying, okay, these are the kind of things I struggle with. I think all guys are this. And I, I you know, there are good men. Yeah. yeah. There are good men. There are men. so many. There, there yeah. are. And, you know, no one's perfect. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I can't express, but yeah. there are good men. And I feel like, unfortunately, yeah. you know, if you're if you're not used to that, you're yeah. not going to think there mm. are. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes when you step out, talk to other people, see stuff, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay, I didn't know that. Mm. And almost like, widen your knowledge of, yeah. in quote, men. Yeah. Um, mm. That would be my yeah. suggestion. Yeah, that's really yeah. helpful. Yeah. Should we do another one? Yeah. yeah. So... Oh, okay, I grew up having the perfect family. My mom and dad were the couple that all my friends looked up to. They led marriage preparation courses and ran so many, oh, sounds like my parents, so many <laughs> workshops and groups within our church. So they really appeared to be that power couple. They always seemed so in love and I always thought I wanted to find a love like theirs. Then when I was 20, it all came crashing down. Mm after it came out that my dad had been having an affair. Oh, child. Mm. This completely pulled the rug from under my feet and it tore my family apart. It also completely changed my view of love. Mm. And I've seen the impact of my dad's actions play out in my adult life, especially in my romantic relationships, Mm. thinking that all relationships must end badly. Fast forward 10 years, I am now married to a guy who I love to pieces, but it has been a journey in trusting him and building a relationship where it's, a, where, it's, where it's a true union. We have made so much progress and our faith has really helped us with this. But one area I still struggle with is how to communicate what I need from him right. as a husband to help me feel safe and comfortable because of the wounds my dad has left. Any mm. tips? Wow. 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 Yeah. Any tips, guys? <laughs> <laughs> trying to process it yeah. <laughs> so, I, wow. I feel um, the safety thing is yeah yeah across the board yeah a big thing for women yeah, it is um and i think just wanting to feel safe is a process you don't yeah. have to give the entire thing no. away mm-hmm. but it takes courage to tell someone i need this yeah. from yeah. you 100%. yeah and you have to speak up about what you mm. need from someone i agree sometimes i think oh he should just know about osmosis yeah. Yeah. like look at my face yeah, he should yeah, know. yeah. but yeah. actually you need to communicate. You need to. So I think definitely, if you want to feel safe, you've mm-hmm. got to tell, mm-hmm. even friends sometimes, you have to mm-hmm. tell them, that was me five years ago. Yeah. Now I need this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've had mm-hmm. to learn that, that people just assume, oh, Sinead yeah. will find this funny. And it's like, that's not funny anymore. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah that, I've changed. That's well, not well, the yeah. joke, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. no, you have I to re- redefine mm-hmm. what you need mm-hmm. and tell other people that I think yeah. it's really important. Mm-hmm. So, no, I definitely, I definitely yeah. agree. And I think yeah. it's hard when yeah, I was having a conversation with someone recently and I was saying that I feel like in more recent years, I, I've noticed that 
I almost struggle to accept mm. the love that I would easily give to others. Right. Wow. So it feels like, yeah. oh, you want this? Mary, uh, yeah, I got you, I got you. But when you're doing it's like, oh mm. gosh, guys. Yes, yeah, too like, much. It's too mm. much. Yeah. Like, okay, around my birthday, that's fine, that's it. But after that, it just feels like, oh gosh, wow, well, okay. Um, I'm so like, wow, you're doing all this for me. And mm. then people are like, wait, you did that for me? I'm just like, oh, okay. But I don't even know I'm doing it. Mm. And I feel like when you're that kind of person who almost like you've, because of your experience where, unfortunately because of your dad's issues yeah um your fam- parents issues and what your dad's done you've almost built this guard yeah mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. like i've i'm gonna secure myself i'm gonna do this i'm yeah. gonna do that and now you get married and you're like actually i love him yeah okay wait, how do we break down this guard then <laughs> yeah because yeah. it's like i'm like mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like, almost like yeah. an automatic <laughs> yeah. it's like you don't yeah. sometimes you're not even aware that that's no. there sometimes mm-hmm. someone has to point it out yeah yeah and i feel like sometimes yeah. it's situations so with us we found that it was certain situations yeah yeah that will point it out mm-hmm. yeah. and the one time my husband was like i think when he was shout, we're not going to be like your parents like, oh oh did i say that <laughs> like i didn't realize it but clearly yeah. i must have been yeah you know yeah. Yeah. It in some way. Yeah. 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 so I, I i definitely feel like i feel like especially if you're married to someone who you love and yeah. it sounds like mm-hmm. you know he loves you and you're happy yeah i think i personally would recommend creating a space or time yeah. where just talk about you know so what mm. we tend to do is every week oh how can i best serve you this week? yeah wow. i like how that's so I, practical yeah, yeah. so it doesn't need to be a two hour deep session so when <laughs> i was and then this is how yeah. you need to do mm. i mean yeah. um but yeah. just like okay how can i help you this week mm. what can i support you with this week yeah. um mm. and it might be little things like oh i've got this um interviews so i'd really appreciate if you could the night before I might be nervous just understand if I'm this mm. but, and before you know it you just start to notice that you're yeah. allowing him yeah. without being so you know mm. and then it'll be easier to then have deeper yep. you know, yeah because yeah. almost like what the little you've given him you've shown him he's showing you that he can do it Yeah. Mm. and even if he's human he might struggle but you're seeing that he's willing Mm. so obviously then it will allow you to kind of open up and be like okay you know what I've noticed I'm this kind of person I don't like this Um, and then you both might you know reach a conclusion and decide okay you know I appreciate that maybe why don't we try this and do this but as you said if you're not talking he's not a mind reader Mm. yeah um, mm, and he yeah. didn't grow up with you, I don't think. Or he's not your brother. He's not in your house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he doesn't know the ins and outs. Yeah. You mm. do. So yeah. I think but, yeah. Married, just in good relationships, I should say, you have to be forced curiosity. 100%. I'm not a curious person. Like, someone tells me that is bread. <laughs> I'll eat the bread and not ask. And I've realised when I'm dating someone, I ask so many questions. Mm. Oh, how tall are you? Mm. Where do you live? And then as soon as I love that, married, that was the first question. <laughs> I'm you. <laughs> and, you know how much money make. <laughs> and then literally once we got married like my husband liked to me you don't ask me any questions and i was like oh mm, sort yeah, of thing and yeah. i just think mm. i actually have this year i've prayed to be a more curious person mm. because that is what keeps the thing alive yeah. and you don't want that person at work to be asking your man more questions yeah, than you're asking them yeah. you know so it's something that i've had to look at myself and think why don't I ask him enough questions? Yeah. You know, is it because I'm just content with this bread or, yeah. you know, so I think curiosity, curiosity is mm-hmm. really good for a relationship, I, I, I think um, so. but mm. it's not because you get comfortable. Yeah. yeah, It's not easy to yeah. break that, mm. you know, like, oh, I know what you want to eat. Just yeah. Yeah. shut up. And, yeah. Oh, you start yeah. work at six. I need <laughs> yeah. to make sure this is ready. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, so when he doesn't go to work, it's like, oh, wait, hold on. This yeah. is our yeah. routine. Yeah. Um, and I think also spending time with other married couples. Mm. Right. Um, yeah, I feel really like yeah. sometimes it's nice to just see the dynamics yeah. um, with other people and sometimes I remember a point where I think in our first year I kind of felt I don't know if I can make this like mm. it was just so different I just felt like mm. oh gosh I remember sitting with a bunch of married women who you know to me was like oh you know you guys are so in love and they're like we had an argument I was like oh, you <laughs> you'll argue? never know yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you know I was upstairs, I had to go upstairs yeah. I'm like oh you know and I thought yeah. I've got this. Yeah. I can yeah. do this. Yeah. Like I'm Perspective normal. Perspective changes. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Or you yeah. see little things or you're, you know, she'd be like, my friend might say, oh yeah, today we're going to try and do this. Once a week we try and make sure we watch a movie together or something. Mm. You're like, oh, why don't we implement that? Do you know what I mean? So I think it does help mm. um, yeah. as well. Yeah. It's so practical. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Oh, no worries. Thank but you. the last yeah. thing, because okay. we're a community, so yeah. we want to know, like, is there anything you're doing at the minute, work-wise, or, like, where can we find you online, like, in okay. a way that we can support you as the Magnify community? Oh, um, so currently now, um, I'm in the process of building up a sisterhood community. Mm. Um, I really believe, um, as women, yeah. together, we are powerful and unstoppable. And I feel like in 
with social media in today's day and age, we don't really see much of that. I feel like mm. on social media, everyone looks cute together, but mm. you know, if someone's going through something, mm-hmm. or mm. someone's struggling, mm-hmm. you're almost like just figure it out yourself and mm. present yourself amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, last year, I just started doing more like hosting some of my friends and people around me, mm. and I started to notice like people really just saying, Oh, I met this person, they helped me out with my work. Yeah, and it was like, even though you just came to my house to have brunch, yeah. all of a sudden now you've met someone who's helped you with work and now you've got a new job with more mm. money and mm-hmm. stuff. So I'm currently working on community. Um, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. Um, Life of Mary O. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that's where I'll be posting when everything's coming. Um, people started registering interest and it was overwhelming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was going to be a small thing. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm currently planning some more events and, um, and stuff. So I just look forward to kind of just bringing all of that together mm. and seeing it come to fruition this year. Yeah. So I think that's the main, apart from being yeah. a mom, a wife, yeah, um, yeah. having a nine to five and <laughs> yeah. other businesses. But yeah, that's kind of currently, um, mm. I was being passionate about women yeah. and yeah. development and that's something that I guess this year I was like, no You've taken hiding. a step in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're going. It's so, good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Amazing. This has been so good. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much ladies. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Magnify Conversations. We hope you've enjoyed it and found it really value adding. If you're new to our community or perhaps you just joined us for the first time today, we have an Instagram. Our handle is at Magnify Collective. You'll be able to find everything you need there to keep up to date with us. Next up, if you have a story that you would like to share on the Magnify Conversations, you can go on our website, magnifycollective.com and share your story with us. We really look forward to seeing you for next week's episode on Monday.